Number 10, Basilosaurus. Sounds like a basilisk. You may be thinking, is she about to say that basilisks are real? Am I wrong? Probably. I don't know you. How are you? How's your day going, me? I feel like I'm developing thalassophobia. I don't even know how to say that right. Welcome everyone to the Basilosaurus, an evil shark snake whale that actually existed on the planet for a while there. Of course, they were massive, growing to 50 to 85 feet long in size, but its size was about the only thing it had going for it, sadly. It couldn't echolocate, couldn't deep dive or breach, just had to kind of chill at one level. Theoretically, if you did see it while swimming, it couldn't and wouldn't chase you if you dove too deep or climbed up on land, because why would it? It looked terrifying and could kill you, but this creature was probably the one who only ever earned a participation badge in terms of most terrifying creature in the sea. If you're like me, you started out scared, but now you just kind of feel bad for the guy. There's a reason he didn't survive. Number nine, Tanistropius. It's a water giraffe. Tanistropius is essentially a water giraffe, except with short legs and a super long neck stretching up to 20 feet long. It could literally be standing on the ocean floor and just have its like head poking up with a submarine telescope, just like. Which apparently is exactly what it did when hunting for food. Its front legs were shorter than its back legs, which somehow helped it pitch its neck above the surface to hunt for lunch on land. Fossils of the creature have been found near the waters of Europe and the Middle East and China, but exactly how much time they spent in the water versus on land is still debated. We may never know unless we find a mosquito or something conserved in resin that provides us with enough genetic info so we can bring them back to life. But that'll never happen, will it? Number eight, Jake Calopterus. If you're having a bad day, then I have just the words to comfort you. Giant sea scorpion. You see, nothing could be worse than that, except there is. I'm glad nature decided that we didn't need this and that they went extinct. It existed long before the dinosaurs and was a victim to the Permian-Triassic extinction event, which killed 90% of all life on Earth. One of the largest anthropods to ever exist, it reached about eight feet long, which is about three feet larger than lol me. Nothing really like it exists anymore, and its closest existing relatives to some degree is the horseshoe crab. They call it a sea scorpion, but whether its tail actually was venomous, we don't know. Archaeologists aren't sure, but its tail does resemble a scorpion, so they think it could be. Number seven, Helicuprian. Imagine a shark designed to cut pizza into six to eight even slices. That is what a Helicuprian was. A prehistoric shark around 270 million years old, best known for its weird vertically circular toothy saw jaw. Paleontologists aren't quite sure as to where exactly its teeth protruded from. Some even consider that it might be attached to the tail or like the side. But the overall consensus was that it sat straight up in the mouth from the lower jaw. A specimen found in 1950 was located in a bay in Idaho, so we know they used to hang around that part of the world a bit. The mouth saw, as we're gonna call it, had 117 teeth and based on a 3D animated model, scientists were able to determine that it did jut up from the lower jaw. Like that, like, like what is that? How did it eat? Like, it just doesn't make sense. I'm not really surprised that this guy didn't last because how would you deal with that? How? Number six, Dunkelosteus. It's like a very big turtle mated with a shark and then immediately regretted it. Not as big as some of the other creatures I mentioned, but definitely something even they would hesitate to mess with. This dude wasn't a picky eater in any sense. Weighing at 4,000 tons and measuring 33 feet long, this guy was ready and eager to compete with even the toughest ones on this list. Sharp teeth? <laughs> Didn't need them. It used two sharp blades to snap and crush its prey, carving through bone like a hot knife through butter. That's how strong it was. It also had solid bone-like armor near its head that it used as a battering ram against any challengers. I feel like if there were mythical civilizations, this would be like the perfect underwater steed. It was made for war. But also, this was one of the creatures and probably one of the first to ever have to engage in coitus in order to reproduce. So sure, some would say they were fighters, but underneath that hard shell, they were lovers too. They obviously weren't very good at it because they're extinct now. Before we go any further, remember to hit that like button and subscribe as always for more, especially if you're new here. You, you like us, come on, like it, subscribe, we love it.
Number five, Dirk Maharaja Krozi. This one is actually a more recent discovery made in the past 60-ish years. The Dirk Mahara is Gaelic for marine lizard, which is exactly what it was, kind of. It's best described as what would happen if you made it a crocodile with a dolphin. Flipper, but scalier. Fossil remains were pieced together like prehistoric Jenga after they were first discovered in 1959. Finally, in January 2015, scientists announced a new genus of ichthyosaur. This creature predates the Jurassic period and was probably one of the head honchos around that time. Had it lived long enough into the Jurassic period, it would probably have been gobbled up considering the creatures who came after were huh, quite a bit larger, as we'll discover. Number four, pliosaur. So we've talked about massive, more terrifying versions of things on this list. But we couldn't leave out a warped version of a crocodile, now could we? Growing to about 59 feet in length and lived around 155 million years ago, this thing could swallow a Dirk Mahara in one bite. Not surprising, since its jaw was about the size of the average human, complete with razor sharp gnashers. According to fossils found in England and Norway, this creature resembled a crocodile in very similar ways, aside from its long paddle-shaped limbs. This allowed it to swim at insanely fast speeds, able to travel around six miles per hour. Archaeologists have found the remains of mainly mollusks and other marine reptiles in its stomach, but more terrifyingly, other dinosaurs. Jury is still out as to whether they took the creatures down themselves or feasted on any remains they found, the latter being more likely. Number three, the Megalodon. Scared of sharks? Well, maybe skip ahead because we are about to talk about the guy we are all grateful doesn't exist anymore. The Megalodon. Two words, Big Daddy. This guy was bigger than a school bus with giant teeth ready to tear into ambitious prey like whales and whatever else it felt like. Fossils of this mammoth of nightmares have been found across the world from Europe to Africa to North America. This beast had no boundaries and of course, when you're as big as this guy, why would you? It's a common belief that they coexisted with dinosaurs, but they actually missed them by around 40 million years. They actually lived around 2.6 to 1.5 million years ago, which implies it may have been around four humans. The reason they went extinct, however, is assumed because of the ice age. The Megalodon enjoyed warm waters and it might have diminished its food supply, so. Thanks, nature. It's fast. Number two, Leviathan Melvilli, the ultimate killer whale. The whale's so big, it had to eat other whales. And also, if you're wondering if I'm meaning to say Leviathan, I'm not. Though it was originally Leviathan, they had to change it because it was taken. So, Leviathan it is. If you've heard the horrific story of Moby Dick, then this would be the whale that they face, though probably not because they were extinct long before the book was even written. They lived around 12 to 13 million years ago during the Miocene Epoch and could grow up to 45 to 60 feet. The head alone was around three meters long. On top of their immense size, they had a terrifying set of sharp, deep-rooted teeth, each about the size of a two-liter bottle of pop, which is more than double the size of a T-Rex's teeth. So with big teeth needs big game and the Leviathan rose to the occasion. From large squids to other whales, the Leviathan was a force to be reckoned with and one I never ever want to encounter. So if there's a trip going back in time, count me out. Number one, the Tylosaurus. It sounds massive, it is massive. It makes you glad you weren't around 65 million years ago. The Tylosaurus was a water-bound lizard who had strong, sturdy limbs that evolved to eventually walk on land. Not a pleasant thought. Its gaping mouth allowed it to swallow creatures whole, or if it couldn't do that, its strong jaws and razor-sharp teeth took care of that. It could grow to the length of 45 feet. I'm 5'6", so it could fit about eight of me. The remains of the great creature have been found all across Texas and Kansas. And if you love the 2015 Jurassic World film, you got a glimpse of the massive monster. Here's a clip to remind you. Did you, did you freak out when it jumped out? Gotcha. Starting us off at number 10 is the Pygmy Rabbit. Believe it or not, this is the smallest rabbit in the world. Their average body length is 9.4 to 11.4 inches, which is 24 to 29 centimeters, and adults only weigh up to 14 ounces, or 400 grams. The Pygmy Rabbit is a slate gray with a pinkish tinge in the winter and then turns more brown again in the summertime. In other words, even these little bunny rabbits can get better tans than I can. I'm not jealous, but you know, anyway, these cute and tiny rabbits can be found all over North America. Usually in areas with deep soil where they burrow into tall, dense sagebrush for cover and for food. 
In and amongst these dense sagebrush, these rabbits can travel through self-made escape routes from other predators. And if they didn't already seem like hard workers, they are also the only rabbits in the United States who dig their own burrows as well. Sadly, this cute little animal back in 2003 was listed as a threatened species due to the loss of habitat. It has since been listed as an endangered species. So if you happen to live in an area with sagebrush, leave it alone and help these little guys out. Just so you know, that's a common theme with today's video. A lot of them are very endangered. Number nine, the pink fairy armadillo. I want one, I want one so bad. I think I found a pet that was made for me. This little sweet angel baby is one of the cutest things on the planet. It looks like a sleepy guinea pig with an armored shell on top. So like an armored guinea pig. <laughs> they are the smallest kind of armadillo on the planet and also have a dorsal shell that's almost entirely separate from their body. The pink fairy has also been nicknamed sand swimmers as they can burrow and move through the ground with their incredible paws like they're swimming through the ocean, like it's that easy for them. During the day they can dig and dig and dig and only come out at night to feed. Though you can usually find them near ant hills because that's easy fast food for them. On a particularly rainy day you may also see them emerge in order to prevent drowning and getting wet. If they get wet they can't thermoregulate properly which can make them ill. But sadly the pink fairy armadillo is on the endangered species list due to threats of their habitat and domestic dogs. At number 8 we have the arboreal minute salamander. If you look carefully at the forest floors of Oaxaca, Mexico, you just might catch a glimpse of one of these tiny lizard-like creatures. It will be fairly easy to spot thanks to its big bug-like eyes. The bodies of these salamanders average 17 millimeters in length, one millimeter shorter than the Jaragua dwarf gecko, who didn't make our list today but gets an honorable shout out. The arboreal minute salamander beat out the dwarf gecko and is believed to be the world's smallest reptile. This is crazy because I thought salamanders were tiny enough already, but I guess not. And I'll never forget seeing my very first salamander underneath a log back in my grade 6 teacher's maple bush. Number 7, Madame Bertha's Mouse Lemur. Up next we have the smallest primate in the world. Reaching lengths of only 4.6 inches in adult males and 5 inches in females, these little fur babies are unfortunately on the critically endangered species list. The Madame Bertha's Mouse Lemur is native to Madagascar and is under threat due to habitat loss. It's easy to see why they are considered mouse lemurs due to their size and the fact that their tails are longer than their bodies. So they look like little mice. They are nocturnal and sleep for most of the day in tree nests and hollows which is why the species are under such threat. Due to slash and burn agriculture, many of their homes are cut down and burned away while they are still inside them, which is even sadder. Researchers estimate that if this process isn't halted immediately, then within 10 years, the species may no longer exist at all. So let's look for other avenues, shall we? At number six, we have my most favorite animal on this list, the speckled padloper tortoise. Why is it my favorite? Because one of my biggest fandoms other than Ghostbusters is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if you didn't already know. So obviously turtles are one of my favorite animals of all time. The speckled paddleper tortoise is definitely part of that. They are also the smallest turtle in the world with males measuring 2.4 to 3.1 inches or 6 to 8 centimeters in length and the females measuring up to 4 inches which is 10 centimeters in length. Sadly, these tiny turtles don't feed on tiny slices of pizza to my disappointment. They feed on small plants. They live in the rocky outcrops of South Africa where they can hide from their predators and live up to 90 to 100 years. Probably a bit safer than the sewers of New York City, so I can't really blame them. Number 5 the bee hummingbird. This little bird is perfect for our channel and I think you can guess why because it's a, it's a bumblebee hummingbird. It's called the bee hummingbird for a reason as it's the world's smallest bird. They are so small they are often mistaken for bees. It measures a mere two and a quarter inches long and lives in the balmy climate of Cuba. They weigh less than two grams which is about the same feeling you'd get if you put a dime in the palm of your hand. It would weigh about the same. Small birds of course lay even smaller eggs and each one is about the size of a tiny coffee bean. But like their larger counterparts they fly incredibly incredibly fast with wings that can beat anywhere from 80 to 200 times a second depending on if it's mating season. If it's mating season they beat around 200 times a second. A second! That's over a thousand beats per minute. They also have two kinds of males breeding and non-breeding. The breeding males are bright and colorful while females and non-breeding males feature more grayscale colors. But the males can get quite aggressive and have been known to chase our channel mascot out of its territory when it comes to seeking out nectar. So. Looks like we got some competition. <laughs> At number four, staying with the bumblebee theme, we have the bumblebee bat, or more commonly known as the Kittis hognose bat. This tiny bat is not only the world's smallest bat, but also the world's smallest living mammal. 
These bats get their name due to their pig-like snouts and reddish-brown coats of fur. They measure in at 1.1 to 1.6 inches and weigh only 0.05 to 0.07 ounces. That's only 1.5 to 2 grams. In case you're wondering why it's also called the bumblebee bat, it's because it is the exact same size as our mascot, a bumblebee. How fitting for it to pop up on our channel, huh? These tiny bats live in the limestone caves along the rivers of Thailand and Burma. An average of 100 individual bats can live in a single cave, and they are sadly also an endangered species. So once again, go online and see what you can do to help these little creatures. Maybe even start a group and meet every week dressing up as Batman characters who swear to save these tiny little guys. Never mind, I called this on that idea, but you are all welcome to join me. Number three, the Barbados Thread Snakes. These little boop snoops are considered the smallest snakes in the world. If you didn't know any better, you would think they were some kind of worm at first glance. They are so small that they can fit comfortably on a quarter. If you weren't able to guess by the title, these living spaghetti noodles are usually found in tropical climates, specifically Barbados, and they were actually discovered pretty recently. It was first identified as a separate species in 2008, and their size makes it no wonder why we haven't met them before. He literally just found one under a rock and was like, huh, that looks new. They are passionate nocturnal burrowers and don't often come out unless they need to feed. Their diet mainly consists of ants and termites, and I think this is really cool. The pheromones they excrete prevents them from being eaten by termites themselves. Cool, right? Thread snakes are also only able to produce one egg at a time, as they just aren't big enough for more than one. The eggs are already minuscule, and if they were any smaller, the species wouldn't be able to survive. Like many on this list, they are also on the critically endangered list due to habitat loss. At our number two spot, we have the Pedophrine onomensis, or the much easier name to call them, the world's smallest frog. Thank you for that one. They also take the smallest vertebrate and smallest amphibian title on Earth. This tiny frog was first discovered in New Guinea back in 2009. It's a new species that doesn't even have a proper name yet, which is why they have such the difficult name that I probably couldn't say earlier. Its average body size is 0.3 inches, or 7.7 .7 millimeters in length, and they are smaller than a dime. It's no wonder that these guys were only discovered in 2009, because not only are they so tiny that anyone can barely see them, they also camouflage in with the leaf litter of tropical forests. So if any of you guys find yourselves in tropical forests of New Guinea, maybe take a magnifying glass and watch your step for these tiny frogs. And last but not least, the Brucheesia micra chameleon. And here we are in our number one spot is a chameleon who is barely the size of the tip of a match. A creature so small we only discovered them back in 2012. It is so small it can sit comfortably on the tip of your pinky. These little cold blooded lizards only grow to about 29 millimeters. That's smaller than some insects. It can be found on Madagascar. Love Madagascar, I feel like that's where all the strangest animals are. Which is coincidentally one of the places the largest lizard is found. But unlike their larger counterpart, Brachysia chameleons can use their tail to climb, while other chameleons cannot. Albeit they can't climb very high, only about 4 inches off the ground. But that probably seems like a 10 story building to these little guys. Success is relative after all. But that being said, despite their efforts they are relatively easy to catch if you find them, though you might not be able to for long. This tiny little species is endangered due to significant habitat loss, though it probably doesn't help that if you see one you can literally just pick it up and there's no fight in that at all. So. Starting us off at our number 10 spot, we have Hydras. No, not the evil villains from the Marvel Universe. I'm talking about these small water-based creatures found in the fresh waters of Europe, Asia, and the Americas. There are between 20 to 30 different species of Hydra, and they are one of the 900 species belonging to the phylum Cyndaria, which are radially symmetrical invertebrates with tentacles. But the really cool part about these underwater creatures is that they are basically immortal. Studies show that these creatures do not show any signs of deterioration with age. They are able to continuously divide and regenerate new body cells and can basically keep themselves young forever. Remember that song Forever Young by Alphaville? It actually might be just about hydras, I think. Number nine, clams. Unless their lives are cut short by the yearly clam bake with your aunts and uncles, clams can actually live an absurdly long time for being that small. Some have even been found to be over a century old. Now to be fair, humans are starting to stretch that boundary too. We're trying our best. But considering how often clams are our food source, it's surprising. Like trees, clamshells also have rings on them, if you look carefully, that track how long they've been alive, which is how scientists can tell how long they've lived. Therefore, the bigger they are, the longer they've lived. They can weigh up to several hundred pounds and be as large as a yard across. 
The oldest clam ever found was named Ming Ming, and though she was only the size of an average human palm, she was about 507 years old, which is like, what? Does size matter? At our number eight spot, we have the Rough Eye Rockfish. Pretty crazy name, right? Well, they get the name because of the spines that go along the bottom of their eyes. Kind of a rude name when you think about it. But these bright and intensely colored fish can be found in the Pacific Ocean, ranging from the northern part of Japan and Bering Sea, all the way to the North American coast down to California. Odds are, you won't get a chance to see any of these creatures unless you do a deep, deep dive because they live and spend most of their time at around 170 to 660 meters below the ocean surface. That's 560 to 2200 feet deep. These fish have been known to live over the age of 205 years old and mature much later on in their life. So that means they get to live most of their life looking young, fresh, happy, full of life with all their hopes and dreams ahead of them. <laughs> uh, must be nice. I mean, honestly, I can kind of do that too. If I ever do a video with my beard shaved off, you will see a Dewey that looks like he is 12. <laughs> Number seven, the Aldebaran giant tortoise. The oldest Aldebaran giant tortoise known to man passed away in 2007, and she was 255 years old, superseding her first owner, Robert Clive, who died at the age of 49 in 1774. Robert Clive was the first British governor in the Bengal presidency and was given Adweda as a pet. It is not uncommon for Aldebar tortoises to live through centuries, and some even suggest that there have been ones twice as old as Azueta who have existed. They only reach maturity at 30 years old, so they age as slowly as they move, it seems. They also can go long periods without food and aren't picky eaters. They can eat almost anything, from vegetation to dead carcasses to even feces. Ugh. With their ability to thrive on both land and water, on top of having a very hard shell to protect them from predators, this species is the poster child for the phrase, slow and steady wins the race. At our number six spot, we have the tree weta, also known as zombie bugs, or also also known as Dewey's worst nightmare. These bugs are ridiculously resilient to freezing and have special proteins within their bodies that prevent freezing from ever actually occurring. Although their hearts and brains are not as resilient to freezing, they can die when being completely frozen. But guess what? When they thaw out, they can come completely back to life like the disgusting zombie-like creatures they are and scare Dewey back into his protective bunker away from every single scary bug on the planet. I've mentioned it before, Dewey doesn't do bugs. But you know what Dewey really doesn't do? Zombie bugs! Number five, glass sponges, not glass slippers. Don't let the name fool you, these sponges are anything but fragile. Forget centuries, these creatures can live for thousands of years, even in the 10,000s. But for a while they were thought to have gone extinct. Joke's on us, goes to show how much we know about the ocean, which by the way isn't a lot, it's like less than 30%. In 1987, a team of Canadian scientists discovered a cluster of living glass sponge reefs over 9,000 years old. So if they can live and thrive for so long, why are they called glass? Well, they get their name from their spicules, which are tiny, sharp structures made from silica, a kind of glass. They feed off of plankton and other small sources of food and can filter enough water in 60 seconds, get ready, to fill an Olympic-sized pool. They also don't look appetizing and mostly serve as homes to other kinds of fish and crustaceans. Though starfish tend to like to feed on them now and then. It's pretty sad. Coming in at our number four spot is one of my favorite things to eat, lobster. Or as a much more fun name, the Homerus Americanus. Sounds like gladiator. I am Homerus Americanus, are you not entertained? Scientists have discovered that through time, some lobsters can increase their fertility due to a certain enzyme called telomerase. This enzyme repairs the lost sections of DNA, making the aged cells revert back to being young again. Though this would seem to make these creatures immortal, the exact lifespan of these creatures is difficult to determine because of the regular molting of exoskeletons. Aside from that, they only have one major predator to fear, and that is me. If you like this video and you are new to our hive, make sure to like and subscribe. We love you for it, and uh, one day, hopefully, we'll all be able to hug you. I don't know. I hope so. Number three, bowhead whales. There must be something about the cold climate of the Arctic because it seems like some of the biggest creatures live there, including the bowhead whale, who, by the way, is not only massive, but can live for over two centuries. They are one of the most well-adapted creatures who live in the Arctic with an insulating layer of lubber over a foot and a half thick without humans being the hunters. Given that they are some of the biggest creatures, nothing can really threaten their existence. 
But beyond that, the reason they can live for so long is due to their unique genetic makeup that allows them to repair their own damaged DNA. They also age slower in general, similar to the tortoise we talked about, and they only reach sexual maturity around 25 to 30 years old. So even though time takes its sweet time killing them, humans don't, and they are under the endangered species list. Coming in at our number two spot is the Greenland shark. Known as the longest living vertebrate on Earth, this shark lives an average of 272 years old. They also don't reach sexual maturity until the age of 150 years old. Now, how can they live so long? Well, with their incredible resilience to cold water, darkness, and living at depths of 2200 meters, I'm guessing most of these sharks won't have much competition down there. This shark is actually from the prehistoric era, which is proven by an extra gill that it has on its body. So not only do these things live for crazy long periods of time, they were able to come out on top after the destruction of the dinosaurs. Man, these guys ain't playing. Number one, Tyratopsis dorni. Imagine being able to decide like when you feel like getting younger, you know? <laughs> Too old, I'm gonna go back a few years. Wow, when will we have that technology? Sounds impossible, but this specific kind of jellyfish can actually do this. When it reaches a certain age, it can begin converting its cells backwards in time. Mm? They aren't indestructible, they can still be gobbled up, but depending on how lucky they are, they could potentially live forever. The creature was first discovered in 1883 and has captured the curiosity of scientists ever since. After all, why wouldn't it? An animal that has figured out how to turn back the clock of time? Now that sounds super useful. These creatures are able to do this through a process called transdifferentiation. The cells begin to convert from one type to another, albeit very slowly. They aren't really aware they are doing it, since jellyfish don't really have brains. They simply survive by how their nerves respond to stimuli, kind of like when a doctor hits your knee with a hammer and you just kick something, it's involuntary. They have no idea how rare and how incredible they really are. Honorable mentions to tardigrades, the water bears, because they're really cute and weird, and they can also live forever. Thank you so much for joining us on Bumblebee as we reviewed our top 10 list of animals that can't die. Can't die, being that they probably got eaten up if they didn't live If they did die. Long. But imagine how much of a boss you'd have to be to like live to 250 years and just not die. I mean, yeah, I don't, like, it's funny, because as much as I actually do want to live forever, there's part of me that goes, no, you have to get to a certain point where you're just like, come on, man. Like, wait, check's imaginary watch. When's, <laughs> when are we done here? Are we done what cooking we, yet? Yeah, I can get that. Now. Cool. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Have a great rest of your day. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher. And I've been your host, Dewey Stewart, and we will see you all back here next time. And until then, buzz off.